praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah by Hashem, Rekwak uh, Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and, 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 and the Optims and Aquat. On down. So today we're just going to go over Deuteronomy chapter uh, eight, 18. Actually, we're going to start in chapter 17. 17 verse uh, 14. You know, man, you know, we see. Uh, you know this this folly going on, and you know the Most High warned His people, you know, uh, to whatever land they go to, you know, not to set kings up over them, you know, and a lot of us are still uh, setting kings up over us, and basically what that goes into that goes into voting, you know, this is why He tell the the, the ten tribes, you know, don't set these kings up over you, you know, because. You know these other nations you know you know they can't save you you know so uh let's go to uh this let's start at verse 14 it's deuteronomy chapter 17 and verse 14. it says when thou art come into the land which the lord thy god yahweh give it thee and shall possess it and shall dwell therein and shall say I will set a king over over thee so like, I will set a king over me like as all the nations that are about me thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee whom the Lord thy God shall choose and from among thy bread so like it. it's uh it's a one from among one from among thy brethren shall thy set king over thee so that means you know one from your own nation you know uh but not the other nations you know it says thou may not set a stranger over thee which is not thy brother see that so this is why you know when we go to these these polling stations and, and you know cast the vote in you know they're basically you know, we still don't see no uh, no results as benefiting us as a nation of people. You know, we still uh, we still uh, going through hardship and trying to be equal to a people who the Most High set up over us, and 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 and, and, um, and you know they know that you know they'll never uh let us be equal to them in their their kingdom okay so this is why the scriptures say you know don't set a king up over thee you see that so the, the and we you know we still trying to we still trying to be equal to these people to this day you know and we still uh being oppressed as a nation not just individual it's not about a, a individual but this is about as a nation of people, the 12 tribes, so-called blacks, Native American, Indians, and Latinos, you know, we're still an oppressed people, even after we um, vote. So I wanted to share that quick hit with y'all, you know, because, man, we got to, you know, the Most High is going to come and set his kingdom up and, you know, his kingdom, his kingdom, is gonna be an everlasting kingdom, and then that's when the twelve tribes of Israel will be at rest, you know. But until then, you know, we still setting these king, these kings up over us, and you know we're not benefiting. So let's go over here and just speak about, you know, doing the Israelite kingdom. It says the the law covenant through Moses. To the nations 
of Israel made provision for a kingdom rule. The individual heading the kingdom was empowered and given raw dignity, not for personal exaltation, but to serve for the honor of God's power and the good of his Israelite brother. Nevertheless, when the Israelite in course of time requested a human king, the prophet Samuel warned of the demand such a ruler would make up upon the people. The king of Israel seemed to have been more approachable and more accessible to their subjects that were the monarchs of most ancient oriental kingdoms. Though the kingdom of Israel began with a king from the line of Benjamin, Judah thereafter became the royal tribe in keeping with Jacob deathbed prophecy. A royal dynasty was established in David's line. When the kingdom was ripped away from Solomon's son, Rehoboam, Rehoboam, ten tribes formed a northern kingdom, while Yahweh, God retained one tribe, Benjamin, to remain with Judah in order that David, my servant, may continue having a lamp always before me in Jerusalem. The city that I have chosen for myself to put my name there, though the Judean kingdom fell to the Babylonians in 607 BCE, the legal right to rule eventually passed on to the rightful uh, higher, the son of David, Yahweh Bashem Yahusha. It say his kingdom was to be endless. A royal organization developed in Israel to administer the interests of the kingdom and consider of an inner circle of advisors and ministers, so like and ministers of state, as well as very governments, departments with their respective overseers and ministers, crown lands, supervise the economy and supply the needs of the royal court. While the kings of Israel in the divinic line could issue specific orders, the actual the actual legislation powered rested with God, Yahweh. In all things, the king was responsible to the true sovereign and Lord, Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai. Wrongdoing and waywardness on the part of the king would bring divine sanctions. Yahweh at times communicated with the king himself. At other times, he gave him instructions and counsel or reproof through appointment. I'm sorry, through appointed prophets. The kings, I'm sorry, Salaki. The king could also draw upon the wise counsel of the body of older men. The enforcement of instructions or reproof, however, rested not with the prophets or older men, but with Yahweh. When the king and the people faithfully adhered to the law covenant given them by God, Yahweh, the nation of Israel enjoyed a degree of individual freedom, material prosperity, and national harmony unparalleled by other kingdoms. During the year of Solomon's obedience to Yahweh, the Israelite kingdom was widely renowned and respected, having many tributary kingdoms 
and benefiting from the resources of many lands. And this is how it's going to be in the land, in, in, in the kingdom uh, to come. You know, the Most High is going to give us possession over, you know, all the lands, you know. And, and, and the children of Israel are going to be at peace and at harmony, you know, uh, 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 dwelling in righteousness under the house by Shem and Hawasha. You know, so, you know, as the scriptures, uh, quoting the scriptures, you know, the kingdom is at hand. And this is why we have to repent, return back to the Most High Yahweh uh, and the Son Yahweh and have faith, you know, that, you know, we will enter into those chariots and, and be taken back to our homeland, you know, in peace. So I wanted to share that with you guys today. I'll be back with the next one, Lord willing. Our praises to Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shah, Bashem Rakwa Kodash. Peace.